the uh, Planning Commission meeting for Monday, November 25th. I will start. Um, I'm John Savory, sitting in for uh, Tyler Smith. And so call to order. Uh, any citizen input on non-agenda items? Okay. We'll move along to public hearings. So I have this thing to read. It's the quasi-judicial public hearing script. The matter presently before the hearing body requires a public hearing. All interested persons in attendance shall be heard on the matter. If you wish to testify on this matter, please be prepared to step forward to the microphone at the appropriate time. State your name and interest in the matter. Please be sure to sign the testimony sheet. Uh, for those uh, people other than the applicants that are interested in testifying as either proponents or opponents, please indicate your desire to speak by raising your hands at this time. For longer presentations, proponents and opponents may buy time from one another. In so doing, those either in favor or opposed may allocate their time to a spokesperson who will represent the entire group. You may be limited by time for your presentation. Generally, the applicant will have a total of 15 minutes to speak. The proponents will be given five minutes each. The opponents will be given five minutes each. And those thought to be neutral on the matter will be given five minutes each. The applicant will then have 10 minutes uh, for rebuttal. All questions must be directed through the chair. Any evidence to be considered must be submitted to the hearing body for public access and to become a part of the record. All written testimony received both for and against prior to the hearing shall be summarized by staff and presented briefly to the hearing body during the staff report. Testimony and evidence must be directed toward the applicable review criteria contained as indicated in the staff report. The comprehensive plan or the applicable land use regulations which the person believes apply to the decision. Failure to raise an issue accompanied by statements or evidence sufficient to afford the decision maker and the parties an opportunity to respond to the issue may preclude appeal to the Land Use Board of Appeals based on that issue. Failure of the applicant to raise constitutional or other issues relating to propose conditions of approval with sufficient specificity to allow the local government to respond to the issue may preclude an action for damages in circuit court. Everyone present is encouraged to testify even if it is only to concur with the previous testimony. <coughs> so uh, we are going now to talk about a request from Gorilla Capital for a minor land partition of 0.23 acre site located at 341 and 347 North Cedar. Currently the property has one single family home with a detached garage and one single family home with an attached garage and the owner would like to split the lot to create two separate tax lots. Brian, do you? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Brian Brown, Planning Director. I'll be presenting this report tonight. Uh, we do have uh, an applicant's representative out in the audience tonight. I uh, don't know if she plans to speak or not, but she's there if you have any questions. Uh, this uh, is a, a little bit different uh, request, simply in the fact that the property is fully developed. And so we usually don't get minor partitions that aren't going to result in new development, and this one doesn't. Uh, you can see the location there on the left. It's right on Cedar Street. And uh, I, probably a lot of you have driven by this intersection, and right here on the corner there's a hedge. And that's actually on a separate parcel that's not part of this application. Uh, but that hedge kind of obstructs the view as you try to pull out in the intersection there, trying to see what's going on. But over here is uh, a drawing that shows you the existing structures. Uh, so you've got this house here with the detached garage, and then you have 
or I think that one. And then you have another uh, residence here on the uh, second parcel that's being created. So all of this is sitting on one tax lot right now, and it's R2 zoning. That's our high density residential zoning district. And so uh, it allows a variety of different kind of housing arrangements in that high density. Uh, and so it certainly could remain just as it is, but uh, the current owners uh, say there's a much better market to sell these homes individually than to try to sell a tax lot that has two homes on it uh, since it's developed. And so they did have to go through a process of moving a, a garage wall, basically tearing down part of a an existing garage because this property line is going to go through it and so that's the proposed property line and and so that it wouldn't go through an existing building and so that the this measurement right here so the existing walls of the the structures on the properties will be at at a minimum seven feet from the proposed property boundary that's why they had to move that part of that garage to make that's this work done, right? it has uh, they also, I believe, adjusted one of the sanitary sewer laterals that was going out to the main in the street here so that it wasn't crossing this property boundary. So there was just, there may have just been one to begin with, and so, and they were sharing it, so now <coughs> there's a separate one for each of the homes as I understand it. Uh, otherwise, you, you risk, if you have your lateral crossing a neighbor's property boundary, that they might uh, cut it off or something else if it's not protected by an easement or something. So I think they just corrected that. The, uh, we do have an aerial here that kind of shows you the homes here. So you've got that little hedge down here at the intersection that isn't part of this. So there's the south house and the other house up here, one of the garages. So the property boundary is going somewhere in here, I guess. Make this work. So if you've taken a look at the staff report, uh, Angie did a good job in preparing this and has gone through all the review criteria. And you'll see that um, almost our response in each one of these is that since they're not proposing new development that so many of them don't really apply and they're not applicable if for at some point they should decide to replace one of these structures or somebody does that then some of these conditions will be applicable to building a new house on the property but as it is it's not because they're not building a new house uh, there were a couple items that I'll mention here that don't conform with the normal standards but we're not really concerned with that because uh, for instance you can almost see it just on the aerial here there's a normal 20-foot setback from the property boundary in the front and uh, if it's a two-story structure the same from the rear and there's only a few feet here at the rear and so it's they're non-conforming but by proposing a property boundary up here, they're not making these setbacks any more non-conforming than they were. Therefore, uh, in our estimation, it's not relevant. And it makes some logical sense that we would facilitate them being able to sell these separately uh, since it's already developed that way. And so the code says as long as you're not increasing the non-conformity, then it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, we got three uh, responses back, and they were not from the general public, fr from agencies and city staff. One of them was from our city forester, indicated that he has no uh, issues with this, and uh, we're not proposing street trees for this application, which we normally would, because we need those to be placed uh, off of the street pavement which would mean on the private property 
and it, they usually need to be in a 12 foot wide easement and there's not room to put that without going through the front of the houses so we're not going to bother with street trees in this case either so it's something that uh, we looked at we also had a response from our city engineer and basically he indicated that since there's no construction he didn't have any concerns but he did point out that the on the existing sidewalk uh, there's a handicapped, or I guess we call it an accessibility ramp that doesn't meet ADA standards today. Uh, but uh, we did not make that a condition of approval to change that, and it was basically going off of our statement all through review of this. Is they're proposing absolutely no new construction of any kind, uh, and therefore there is an existing sidewalk in front of this and there's existing sidewalks in many areas of town that don't meet ADA standards so until some new construction is per we're not recommending that we require that they fix that nonconformity at this point but that would occur when if they were to redo a house or make an addition to a house and need a building permit then that could come up and be corrected in that instance uh, so I think that's all the comments that we had. And then <coughs> I'll just go through a couple of the items in the staff report here. Uh, I already talked about the setbacks, and then I talked about tearing down a portion of the garage for the proposed property boundary, and... Uh, So there's really no improvements being proposed by the applicants. Uh, they are going to, uh, one of the conditions of approval standard in any partition is that they will uh, need to file a partition plat to implement if you should approve this. Uh, that's actually just the past few years that they've been requiring the partition plat. Uh, and there are certain circumstances of where they were requiring it before, but I believe they're requiring it in all instances now. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if there ever was one where they wouldn't require it, this would be it with, it's already developed out. So we'll see what, what the county surveyor says when they try to implement this, but I think they're gonna have to do that. And what that will involve is an actual survey because the drawing that they've submitted isn't really, uh, doesn't have the stamp of a registered stur survey on it and everything else. And the partition plat will have to have that. And one of the conditions of approval that we had shouldn't be a, an issue or problem, but it's this proposed property bounty to make sure this is seven foot from the existing buildings. Uh, when the survey is actually done and you know, it's eight foot something and so when you get it that close it worries us a little bit is there really enough room when they're just giving us a drawing that says there is is there in the real world enough room to do this so we've just made that a condition of approval to cover ourselves to make sure they're meeting that standard uh, we talked about no street trees and then the applicant isn't uh, proposing any new driveways they're going to utilize the same driveways that are already out there and let's see if there's anything else the the uh, basically the county surveyor has pretty much been responsible for assuring that the partition plat has <coughs> all of the required uh, I guess parameters that state statute requires to be on a plat that's filed of record so uh, the staff will get a copy of that partition plat and the applicant one of the conditions is that they apply to the city for approval of a final plat that gives us the opportunity to review that partition plat and uh, 
pass it around to the utility agencies if we need to do that to make sure that everybody agrees that in concept what we've approved here with conditions is met on that final plat. Uh, one thing they don't do normally is show existing buildings on the partition plat itself that gets filed. So one of the conditions is we've asked for a note on the plat that says it's meeting the interior side yard setback of seven foot. <laughs> so I'm going to be looking for that to make sure that that's on that plat somewhere so that we know that it was accounted for in that survey. Uh, going over the conditions of approval, uh, I've really al already talked about the ones that are important is that uh, final partition plat being done and that the applicant apply for a final plat with the city. And I believe that fee is $100 for that. Don't quote me, but I think that's what that is. And then uh, that'll get our stamp of approval on that final partition plat. And they'll take that back to the county and, and get that recorded. And then that should make it happen. And after they do that, uh, I believe that they usually create new deeds for each of the tracks as well, and they record those as part of the process as well. So then that'll show up in any title search in the future that they're, they have separate deeds with separate legal descriptions, et cetera. And that's really uh, the, the report, and we have recommended approval of this subject to the conditions that are listed. Okay. And you're the applicant? Yes. Okay. Yeah, as a matter of curiosity, I'm, I'm curious about the the little <coughs> the little lot with the hedge. Now, uh, do you guys live in either one of those? I know, we do not. I actually work for Gorilla Capital, which is a, an investment company at the agency. Oh, okay. Mm. I was just curious as to who maintains. I, and I'm not sure if you owns that lot with the hedge. Yeah, and I didn't look it up. It was a city that did. Was it? Well. Yeah, and I'm not sure the city's actually the owner, but we didn't try to analyze that once we found out it wasn't part of this request. Mm -hmm. But it is kind of odd that there's a separate yes, yeah. parcel there. <laughs> yeah. But I had other things to do than try to figure out why did that <laughs> become the way it is. <laughs> that is odd. Uh, are there any questions? Okay. Have a motion. I would move that we approve minor land partition MLP 1302 as presented by staff. And I second that. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, we approve this. And uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. You're good. All right. Great. Thank you. So, are you, there isn't any new business, and so we can move on to final decisions, I guess. Okay. And got two of them there. So we've uh, we've got. Uh, First one, MLP 13-03, Jason Bristol, minor land partition of a uh, .41 acre site located at 658 Northeast 10th Avenue into three parcels. Now, I just might remind you again that uh, the normal procedure is for us to put your oral decisions in writing at the following meeting. And that's really what we've done here. If you recall, that minor partition uh, had quite a lot of discussion and you ended up uh, disallowing the third tract and the only thing that I wanted to point out to you in, the, in these uh, prepared written findings is that is this the well this is the Bristol one yeah is uh, we believe your decision uh, included, and it's in our minutes as well for that meeting, 
that that uh, you didn't require each of the remaining two lots to be 7,000 square feet, but you required that the average of the two lots be 7,000 square feet. Because the way he had it proposed with a straight line, mm -hmm. it was only 6,900 or something. But if you average the two together now, they're over the 7,000 because they got rid of the third lot. And, and as I recall, he was going to do some yeah, he had, odd little... He had two other ways where he could make it 7,000, but he preferred the straight line that results in it slightly less than 7,000. And there's a provision in the code that allows it to be less than 7,000, but not less than six, uh, if you guys approve it, and if the average is 7,000. Right. So that's what we put in the finding, is that you're OK with the average being 7,000 between the two lots. Just wanted to point that out. So any, any further discussion on? Mr. Kerry, yeah, I would like to ask, what about that third partial now? That is not in... No, it says very specifically the okay. in here, I don't know which condition it is on here, but we six. added number six that says the Planning Commission does not approve the creation of a special purpose parcel three. And so that, you know, it will be removed from the partition plat that gets created. So then there's actually only two There's only of two, right. two tracks. Make sure that that's right. So okay. basically the parcel three is getting totally absorbed by parcel two that was adjacent to it. Okay. Any, any further discussion? <coughs> so we need a motion? Approval. Can we do them both together? Or are we going to do? It'd be best to do them separate. Okay. Uh, I move that we approve uh, final decision on MLP 1303, Jason Bristol, minor land partition of 0.41 acres located at 658 Northeast 10th Avenue. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. <coughs> we have to go and give final approval of the. Uh, yeah, minutes. and ton tonight we, we went ahead and prepared this one because it looked pretty straightforward. We didn't think you'd probably make changes, and so it facilitates for the developer to get it done and not have to wait until the following meeting. Have a motion on that, please. I'll make a motion that uh, MLP 13 2 Gorilla Capital <coughs> minor land partition of a 0.23 acre site located at 341 and 347 North Cedar. Currently, the property has one single family home with a detached garage and one single family home with an attached garage, and the owner would like to split the lot and create two separate tax lots. All in favor, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Okay, so um, we all had a chance to review the minutes of the last meeting. Mm -hmm. I may have a motion. Are there any corrections or additions you'd like to bring up? First one here, request for this. It says partial two and three will continue as your agriculture is not. So we don't have a partial three under our new. Uh, and the minutes are reflecting that his request was for three parcels. Okay. Right. So it just. Yeah, and so on it. down in there, you're going to see that what your discussion was and that you removed that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we accept the minutes of August the 26th, 2013, as presented to us. 
Okay. Have a second. No second that. It's been moved and seconded to accept the uh, minutes from the, uh, the last meeting. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. There we go. Uh, items of interest and report from the staff. Okay. Uh, We've got one item listed right there about your December 9th meeting. Um, currently, there's not any land use applications that would be ready for that meeting. However, it's kind of looking like there may be an appeal that will be on that meeting from planning director's determination that a uh, city historic landmark, which is a home, that's currently located on the Zor Lutheran Church property uh, cannot be moved to a vacant lot on South Knott Street that is zone C2 because it doesn't allow single-family homes as a permitted use and that's where they want to move it and so uh, currently I've I've indicated uh, verbally quite some time ago that I didn't think the code allowed it. The applicant came back and suppressing the issue, so I'm going to probably write a uh, written determination of that. And I'm anticipating that he's going to appeal that and wish to be on your agenda on December 9th. So that means we'll be putting a few sections of the code together to try to show you why I believe the code doesn't allow him to do that and I've been looking for every actually I've been looking for every possible loophole I can find in the code and I can't seem to find one that really gives you or me the authority to allow them to put this house on that zone property okay. uh, so I'm just kind of letting you know and uh, Right now, that's probably the only item that I think is on that agenda. And then the following December meeting, do you know what the date of that meeting was? We canceled it. We did cancel it the 23rd because there just won't be any staff here, so we didn't think you'd <laughs> oh, want to. Let's pay some overtime. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, we'd have to fly back from out of state, so. Uh, well, so are you going to be somewhere we'll, warm? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the only other thing I had was uh, to let you know uh, your chair actually attended a work session that the council held. It was at their <coughs> request, at the mayor's request, that we hold a uh, work session to go over. Now I'm trying to remember because I just finished working on another work session that's on December 4th. Landscaping. It was landscaping. Um, and we spent about an hour discussing the landscaping requirements and you know if it's something that I could actually put on your agenda for December 9th if if because uh, we'll have plenty of time and I could go through it real quick just as an educational because that's exactly what I was doing with the council is to clearly uh, indicate to them what our landscaping provisions are and by doing that I had to go through and figure out a fairly quick and simple way to conglomerate the whole code and I've done that and so it might be something worthwhile if you have any interest I could go through that right here for you guys as well I like that. And the, I would too if, if, yeah. they're, if they do yeah. have an appeal and we actually have a meeting, yeah. that would be. And I can tell you at this point, they said they'd get back with me, but uh, there only seemed to be a couple items that I actually brought up that I thought might merit a possible code amendment. And so that might be a good reason for you guys to see it as well. And you can decide whether you think we need to pursue those couple of items that I brought up. That might warrant the code amendment. Okay. Sounds so. like a great idea. Okay. That's all I've got. Okay. Um, hearing no other business that we have, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I would move to adjourn, sir. Second. All in favor of adjourning? Say aye. 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 Opposed? We're done. <laughs>